I'm Chris Mortensen. You know, I've seen a lot of starting lineups. This one's impressive. Anthony Fletcher, Georgetown University. Fred Metters, Baylor College of Medicine. Ali Krish, Emory University. Kathleen Soterik, Duke University. Lowry Barnes, Harvard. Carlos Ramon, Tulane University. Where do I practice? Where do I practice? St. Vincent. St. Vincent. St. Vincent. Nationally respected physicians here at St. Vincent and on your team. St. Vincent, inspired. GMA Talk is your number to call for kidney stone questions, really anything urology uh, connected. Dr. Uh, Jones can certainly handle that. Dr. Gail Reed Jones, our guest today from St. Vincent, good to have you. Thank you for Welcome. having me. We want to talk a little bit about kidney stones because they can be so painful. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. In fact, um, many people who have kidney stones, um, of course, if you have one, you know you have one. Mm -hmm. um, many times the symptoms are an immediate sudden onset of pain. We describe it as flank pain or side pain, mm -hmm. but it's a very immediate, you know, you could be talking to a friend and all of a sudden out of the blue, you get this pain and you have an urge to go to the bathroom and, right. and void. And also too, sometimes when you do go, you may see blood in your urine. And so some of these are symptoms that many patients, when they arrive to the emergency room, because the pain is generally described as some of the worst pain yeah. someone has ever had. Women will sometimes say it's even worse than labor pain. I've heard that from, from mothers saying that. Okay, mm -hmm. let's get to the phone lines and see what they would like to ask you about. Karen is up first from Bryant. Hi, Karen. Hi, um, I have a question. My, um, I have had an ultrasound and they have told me I have a, a calcium deposit uh, kidney stone. Is that something that I'm gonna have to eventually have re uh, removed or not? Well, Karen, not necessarily. It depends a lot on where the stone is located, if you're having pain, and if you have any other uh, major medical abnormalities. Just the finding of a stone alone is very common. In fact, any of us, even this in the studio right now, if someone were to ultrasound our kidneys, they may find some calcium deposits. So pain, any other symptoms you may be having uh, that are related to kidney stones may prompt someone to say, yes, you do need something done. But I would advise you, if you have a family history or if you have any other risk factors, definitely water. Don't make sure you're drinking a sufficient amount of water every day, which generally states make enough to produce about two quarts of water of urine in a day, which means consuming at least that much. Okay, very good. Give us a call if you have another question. Let's just talk a little bit about more about what causes them and what can we do to mm -hmm. prevent them. Well, what causes stones can be a variety of things. Family history, of course, is so important, but we know that so many other environmental things, things you eat, things you drink, or maybe the things that you're not eating or not drinking. Uh, we also would advise anyone in this type of weather, 107 in the shade, mm -hmm. you need to make sure if you're outside working, you are well hydrated. And as I was saying to Karen, make sure that you're consuming enough water in a day to produce about two quarts of urine every day. And of course, no one's measuring their urine every day, yeah. but your urine should look very pale almost, uh, that kind of uh, a consistency to your urine. Um, but how to prevent them uh -huh. would be also a more important thing because prevention of stones is so important. And once again, diet is, is the, probably one of the mainstays of how we try to treat and prevent patients. Treating stones is a different story. Preventing stones is even more important. Diet, uh, and some people would say that calcium intake, don't really reduce the amount of calcium you're taking in. Maybe keep a standard diet, a normal intake of calcium is so important um, because most stones are based on calcium and also oxalates, which are oxalates can, are in normal occurrence in our diets. But a consumption of high intake of tea, uh -huh. um, maybe some very high uh, uh, things like green leafy vegetables have oxalates. And of course, I'm talking about an overabundance of these things. So any imbalance in your diet it can create uh, an abundance or a creation of stones. Uh, sodium, uh, it's advised that uh, anyone who has stones to watch the sodium intake you have. Decreasing your sodium is so important. So the salt intake, foods that you really don't realize have high salt intake, okay. especially if you like to eat a lot of fast foods, 
then make sure that you're reducing that. So some of those are simple things. And then citrate. It's a very common uh, thing to uh, prevent stones. So increasing the amount of, say, for example, we say lemonade therapy. Someone wants to drink and add a little lemon to their water or maybe orange juice every day. These are things that help. Lemonade therapy sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. We've got another caller on the line. Carla is in Hot Springs and she has a question. Hi, Carla. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm calling. My sister had recently had a a back procedure gone bad. Anyway, she ended up paralyzed for two months after this, and now she can walk some with help. But um, she can't urinate. And they ended up having to do back surgery on her, and she still can't urinate totally on her own. She can only urinate partially, and then she has to catheterize herself after that. Is there something that can be done about that, or is that just something we're going to have to live with? Well, Carla, if you're saying she only recently had this surgery, it's only about two months, some of the things that can happen to the bladder uh, from a neurogenic standpoint or neurologically may slowly resolve over time in some individuals. Of course, we always like to know really truly what was her status even before she had that surgery, what was the bladder doing then. But catheterization in some form, and intermittent catheterization like you're describing is what we call it, is so important to empty the bladder. Can something be done? Well, yes, probably in a, in a few uh, months or maybe even your surgeon will suggest to see a urologist to have what's called a urodynamic study to see what the function of the bladder is, where it is now, and maybe some options about how it could recover. Maybe need to give it a little more time. Yes, to time make is so important when we're talking about bladder function. Uh -huh. Give it time. Some of this will resolve possibly on its own, but not knowing the whole nature of her medical uh -huh. condition, I would say let's give it time. Make sure you talk to your surgeon. Okay, thank you. Great information today. We thank you for visiting with us. We want to put up the information, of course, about Arkansas Urology. Uh, Dr. Reed Jones with St. Vincent, but Uro Arkansas Urology is the clinic there on Centerview Drive in Little Rock. There's the phone number for more information. If you have more questions or you think you need to set up an appointment. Well, thank you. Thank you. This has been fun. Yes. We appreciate Not a nice, to uh, fun topic, oh. but something that a lot of people have to deal with. So. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much for the info. All right.